Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video. We're going to have a look at whether the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Day 10 will take us to the 26th of January. And we'll be able to extend out beyond that. We have said GFS and ESM on Sommel's very much around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. And I should get on with that for you in a moment. I'll bring you a take what's going on in the stratosphere as well. Uh, just say the first video of today was our 6am upload. And uh, we're going to be live streaming uh, this evening. So I'll see you live uh, a little bit later on. Um, so I'm going to just say as well, uh, but Sunday Roundup returned last week. So Gaz, the Sunday Roundup is back, but at the moment it's once a month. So uh, the next Sunday Roundup will be like the first Sunday of February and then the first Sunday of March. And so um, until you get into summer, then we'll probably bring the Sunday Roundup back. You know, a little bit more regularly. But at the moment, Sunday roundups are just once a month. And in between, on a Sunday, we just do a 10 to 14 day. Uh, right, OK. So let's get on with the 10 to 14 day. Then I'm going to start off by having a look at the uh, what's going on in the stratosphere over the uh, North Pole. So this is the current situation. Talked about this in yesterday's video, but I just wanted to bring you up to date with the latest uh, GFS with this. So um, we've got these blue colours here over the North Pole. These are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere at 10 HPA over the pole. As we push through, you can see that uh, those blue colours are kind of displaced a little bit uh, by the 24th January, sort of um, in uh, over a week's time, in around, uh, you know, a few days' time. They get displaced more towards the Canadian and Atlantic side of the uh, Arctic by this very slight warming that's taking place over Siberia. However, still the polar vortex is one and truly uh, in business there. Uh, by the 24th of January. Now, is there any sign of a warming of the stratosphere? Let's have a look. So, uh, yeah, we do start to pick up a little bit of a warming there over Siberia as we get into the end of January. It's not a sudden stratospheric warming, but definitely quite a significant warming of the stratosphere taking place there over Siberia and into, uh, you know, in, in just about into the far eastern edges of the Arctic, really. But it's basically centred over Siberia, about. And over the pole itself, we actually still have those blue colours. So, polar vortex is still one truly, you know, in business up to the 1st of February, as far as we get to today with uh, today's GFS. So, yeah, quite a significant oil strategy. The GFS is doing this. GFS operations uh, uh, are doing this quite regularly. The midnight run of the GFS also did that, and one or two of yesterday's uh, GFS runs uh, as well. That is just short of what would be considered to be a, a level, you know, temperature level significant uh, for a uh, sudden stratospheric warming. So, it's just shy of that. But it is quite a significant warming up of strategy taking place over Siberia. So that's one to watch. It's a long way out, two weeks away, beginning of February, end of January, beginning of February. That might be the start of a train towards the sun traffic warming for early February. Or it, it might not. You know, uh, it could be something, it could be nothing. Just going to wait and see how the GFS handles this and whether, like the ECM extended, we can start picking up on this uh, as well. So we'll be keeping an eye on it, but I wouldn't get overly excited about it uh, just yet. Central temperature is in, uh, so starting at 5.5 now, that's provisional to uh, the 15th of January, that's still 2 degrees above average, but obviously that is coming down on a day-by-day -day basis, and uh, over the next few days we'll probably see that dipping into the fours, I would have thought, so that's going to get into fours uh, in the next week, and then of course we wait and see where we go uh, beyond that as we move into the final week of the month. Still unravelling that very warm uh, opening day where we had, you know, something like uh, a 10 degree or more uh, anomaly for New Year's Day, so we're still unravelling that to be honest, and it has come down a lot, you know, over the past uh, over the past couple of weeks during the first half of January, but still like two degrees above average. But anyway, we're well and truly into the fives now, and we're heading into the fours. Uh, one or two people asked whether this could be the uh, warmest winter on record. There's no uh, chance, no prospect of that at all. So I'll just very quickly talk you through this. Um, so this is a CT page at the uh, UK Met. About every year, CT all the way back to uh, 1659. It's the longest, most reliable sort of temperature record anywhere on Earth. So uh, we see that uh, December was a mild month, but it had a CT of 6.4. That's nowhere near, you know, nowhere near uh, the December that we had in 2015, uh, when we had a December CT of 9.7. And then we had uh, February, uh, January, February, I should say, of 2016 at 5.4. 
and 4.9. And that still left us just short, actually, of the warmest winter on record. But warmest winter on record for the CT is a really, really long way uh, back, actually. A really long way back. It's absolutely extraordinary, really, given how warm we've been over the past, uh, you know, over the past decades and so. But actually, the warmest winter on record still remains. So the CT, I think it's a little bit different for UK temperatures. Uh, but for the CT, the warmest winter on record still remains 1868 1869, just here, which had a December CET of 7.2 for 1868, a January CET of 5.6, and um, a February CET of 7.5. So we know that already December has been, uh, you know, under what it was in 1868. January is almost certainly going to come out under... Um, 1869, given that we're already at 5.5 and, you know, expect that to fall further. Um, and, and, you know, we might get an extraordinarily warm February, but even if we do, I don't think December and January will be warm enough to offset, uh, you know, uh, I don't think they'll be warm enough. So I think 1868, 1869 is pretty safe, pretty solid as, uh, as the warmest winter on record. This probably will be a mild and average winter, but I wouldn't think it's going to be like, um, you know, the warmest on record. I don't think there's much prospect of that. Famous last words, um, but I'll be very surprised if it is. It might be the snow list, though, uh, winter on record. I don't know. Uh, these are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles uh, for the next couple of weeks. So we're looking at London today. So the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for London. Of course, we're above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment, but we have had inversion taking place, which means it's been cold on the surface. It's actually a bit milder today, but we will go back to those inversion-type conditions over the next couple of days. There is, of course, a significant drop in temperature that's taking place around Thursday, although there's a lot of uncertainty about this. Some models aren't, aren't really bringing any cold air in on uh, Thursday. Uh, GFS and its ensemble is actually going quite cold on Thursday. So that's all to be uh, revealed. That's only like a few days away, so hopefully that will be resolved soon. Then there's a little bit of a lift up in the upper air temperatures again, but that will be again with high pressure and after the dropping temperature, that will produce probably growing in frost and fog at the end of next week into next weekend. And then just a general sort of cooling trend by the look of it as we go into the last week of uh, January, in so including some really quite cold ensemble members that are still there within the pack. These ones uh, down here. The GFS operational run for the 6 l which is this thick green line just here, that does lift off a little bit and becomes um, not a warm outlier, but certainly one of the warmest ensemble members at the very end. Uh, Precipitation-wise, it remains really dry as well over the next week to 10 days or so. Maybe getting a little bit more unsettled towards a uh, month's end. In terms of sea level pressure, this is how we're looking. So uh, we're ranging from around 1,030 to 1,040 millibars over the next week or so. Perhaps a little bit of a drop in the temperature though taking place into the last days of January. Two metre temperatures look like that for London. So a little bit milder today. Then we've got some colder days coming up in the next few. Perhaps slightly less cold on uh, Wednesday. And then it goes really quite cold indeed through uh, Thursday, Friday and into the weekend, which does include some quite sharp overnight frost. A little bit of a lift up then. Uh, into like the end of the third week of, uh, of January. And then loads of scatter. So we've got the milder ensemble members up here. They are very mild. And then we've got these much colder ensemble members down here as far as snow row is looking. So again, no prospect of snow over the next few days, really. Um, might be some wintry weather towards the end of January, but it's a long way off. And it is really extended range. Let's just have a look at the extended uh, GFS ensembles. There we are. So still with that train to turn things cold at end of January into early February. So the current situation is just here. Uh, I think you can see, yes, there is still that idea there within the extended GFS ensembles. And it might start to get colder as we uh, get to the very end of January and into early February. It's definitely a drop in the ensemble mean, which is the white line taking place there through the first week of February. And then into the middle part of February, probably, if anything, a bit of a recovery. 
uh, in the temperature. Also gets more unsettled as we go along, so not much precipitation to start off with. Late January, a little bit more precipitation, and then increasing precipitation through the early part of uh, February, the first half of February. Snow roam with the extended looks like that. And again, increasing risk of snow as we go into early February. Remember, this is all for London, so places north of that will have an even stronger single probably for, for snow and um, you know, uh, snow and, and uh, cold weather into early uh, February. That's how the extended ensembles look for Leicester, for example, and a slightly stronger signal there, uh, perhaps. Although some of, the, some of the snow spikes are actually bigger for London, which perhaps indicates that some of these are being brought in by uh, easterlies, I would have thought, rather than northerlies. Anyway, it's all very extended, so it's not reliable. And in the more, ex you know, more reasonable time frame, which is the next week, 10 days, there's no sign of uh, snow, really. Except maybe on Thursday down the east coast, there might be a few snow flows there. Uh, if you get enough, uh, enough of a uh, northerly. Temperature anomaly, from the 16th, 24th of January, are going to be below average for England and Wales, or a bit above average for Scotland. Precipitation anomalies from 16th, 24th of January are drier than normal. Later in from that, from EarthNollSchool.net shows that, uh, you know, we've got uh, the western is still running in to the north of the country. So we're still actually on the mild side of the jet stream, but we're building up another area of high pressure, which means we will have more inversion type conditions in the next few days and nights with further frost and fog. That's how you can make Euro looks for midnight on Wednesday. A weather system will be pushing in from the north, bringing outbreaks of rain up to a light battery as it spreads south east. So then the high pressure pulls out to our west. We drop that cold front southwards, a little bit of patchy rain on it. But the main thing that does is introduce some colder air from the north. Then as the high pressure builds back in, you know, there will be a risk of quite significant overnight frost and fog at the end of week at that area of high pressure. My name is Scotland by next weekend. It's cloudier. Still under the high pressure in Wales, so keeps the frost and fog risk going. And that carries on. On really right way through the weekend that uh, area of high pressure dominates away from Scotland where it's milder it's likely to be quite cold with further frost and fog I would have thought I have got icon up so let's very quickly go back to there there we go we'll very quickly have a look at the midnight icon run uh so at 72 hours icon looks like that again bring down that uh cold front very weak feature that will be uh, then we go into Thursday, and we're going to be in a slightly colder air mass. Uh, the, although not as cold as like the GFS is showing, interestingly, on Thursday. So how cold Thursday gets is, uh, you know, remains to be seen. High pressure just dominates the weather then at the end of the week and into the weekend as well. It'll be quite cold for us and fog under the air of high pressure. But Scotland will be a little bit milder with winds in from more of a westerly direction. And that carries on right way through to midday on Sunday. So the GFS midnight run is looking. Again, we're pulling that cold northerly there on Thursday. A little bit more of a northerly with a GFS output compared to, say, Icon. So Thursday, consequently, is a colder day. And then high pressure sits around the country as we go through the weekend. Into the early part of next week, again, another very brief sort of uh, northerly blast there. Just on the periphery of it, but another sort of normally blast there around the 25th of January. And then the high pressure builds back in. That <laughs> keeps the frost and fog uh, going once more. In the more extended range, um, we look like that. So always with that high pressure to the west, still re reasonably dry. Still bringing in the wind from a northwesterly to northerly direction, which is quite chilly. But the coldest air always away to our north and east. And as we get to the end of a GFS midnight run, that uh, high pressure is still sitting there over the top of the country, more or less. So further frost and fog, further gruesome do some through the final week of January with the GFS. Midnight run, the 6Z looks like that. Again, uh, we've got that uh, northerly setting in through uh, Wednesday into Thursday. Again, a little bit more of a northerly compared to other models around the middle part of the week. We'll bring cold air in from the north and northeast. Then the high pressure ridges back in through the end of the week and into the weekend. It's just mainly dry. There will be plenty of frost and fog with that as well and then my pressure just begins to slip away a little bit as we go towards day 10 low pressure starts to run into the north that's up to things a little bit unsettled a little bit more uh mobile and and slightly milder uh as well um not for long though uh but for normal areas perhaps it does stay you know milder and, and wetter towards the end of january and into the start of february but for england where it's still close that area of high pressure it is quite a bit milder though for all areas there by the end of the gfs6 so bear in mind though uh we have already established that the gfs uh in six Z in its extended range does sort of take off and become one of the uh you know one of the mildest solutions really so i'm not sure that idea has a lot of support 
uh, GM, looks like that. If you enjoyed the video, please just smash the like button. Reach your sub to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. And drop a comment. Let's know about this, all of our videos. GM, again, uh, showing that uh, normally from Wednesday through to Thursday, telling you a little bit cold. Then the hype comes back in across the country through Friday and sits around the country into the weekend. Where it gradually weakens up to day 10 and some milder, wetter and windy weather, more mobile weather starts to uh, return by day 10 with the GM. And then, once again, we've got to go to Metro seal to have a look at the ECM as it has not updated at uh, Weta. So uh, here we go then again lots of high pressure around the country at the end of the week and into the weekend as well. Gradually high pressure begins to slip so as we get to um, 26th of January the job begins to turn a little bit more unsettled and slightly milder. This low pressure to the south of Greenland started brings some slightly milder wetter conditions in from off the Atlantic. Precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tometro.com showing a lot of dry weather really over the uh, next week or so not until the very very end but it begins to get a little bit more unset with some shy rain beginning to break out it's a long way out of course these are the arch on the table within the east on summer today for day 10, which gets us to the 26th of January. 13 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure to our east. It's sort of slipping, really, as lower pressure begins to develop with a jet stream way to the northwest. That does include the operational run. 12, again, with high pressure more or less over the country. That lots of dry weather. Could be some frost and fog. Uh, another 12 with high pressure over, just slightly to our west with that one. 10, again, take high pressure away to west. Start to introduce something a little bit more on set of the Atlantic, probably a MEM4 with a ridge of high pressure extending, extending in from the Atlantic into northern Europe. In two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got, and it'll get us to the last day of January 31st. Uh, 19 members of the East Ensembles with low pressure away to the northwest, high pressure to our south. Still a lot of dry weather with that. More of in the north and would be mild. 17 with low pressure to our east northeast, high pressure in the middle of the Atlantic. That's a little bit unsettled and potentially quite chilly. And then 15 again with low pressure over to the east of the country and down will come that northerly and uh, that makes it uh, quite unsettled and potentially quite cold there with that for the end of uh, January. But probably only cold snap as there's no real northern blocking involved to lock that cold air in. So probably a bit of a cold snap end of January, but not lasting for all that long. Uh, last EVs, uh, this is uh, CFSV2, 500 millibar height on it, break down to meet peers. First week peer takes from the 6th dip to 22nd of January. The coming week have high pressure dominating over the top of the country. Uh, still high pressure goes on into week 2 as well, 23rd, 29th of January. Lots of anti-cyclonic influences, keeping the dry weather uh, going. A bit more unsettled, but week 3, 30th, January to 5th of February, low pressure towards the north struck, high pressure slipping a bit further south as in comes more of a westerly type flow. And then week 4 is the 6th to the 12th of February, and uh, still with high pressure, more or less over the slight to our south, low pressure up to the north. The main thing, in fact, is that it is probably quite mild and spring-like. If you enjoyed the video, please just smash the like button. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Drop a comment. Let's hope you miss all of our videos. And don't forget to tell your friends to subscribe as well. It's amazing. It's incredible. And thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing this for Gaz Worthies. And uh, we're done then uh, for our 10 to 14 day. We're going to be back this evening uh, live streaming. Uh, so we'll have a look at 12 then. And, of course, if that wasn't enough, we will also do Ensembles Watch Live. We'll go through all Ensemble members and see what they're showing uh, for the next couple of weeks. So I should see you live uh, this evening. But for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.